All right, well, hey, welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And gosh, what's this? A caddy? What could that possibly go to? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this thing. Means we're going to need a stack of these. And well, uh, you know, modern computer here. Got to get out the old laptop. And as you can see, I use it a lot. A lot. Oh, boy. Why am I doing this? Before I can start slamming A570s into the side of an A500, or even having to make discs that I can put into it, I need to be able to boot my Amiga 500. And well, it, you know, doesn't have a hard drive on it. It has a floppy drive, one floppy drive. And I do have an external floppy I can use with it if I get desperate. One of those original Commodore ones that came with the 1000. Well, if you paid for it, it would come with the 1000. And I gotta tell you, it's been a circus just to get, let me show you here. Just to get the, th the three floppies I need. I need a workbench floppy. I need an extras disc just to have it because, you know, a complete workbench 1.3, right? And then I need the A570 utilities disc. Three floppies. I first started with our good buddy over here, Grease Weasel, which uh, that's a TAC drive. It's the latest 1.4 Grease Weasel. I can't get this thing to work. It never works for me. I mean, it's... I did actually get a little further in WinUE with it where it did actually recognize it and kind of started to work. And then it just started freaking out. But I mean, I clean this floppy. It's, it's, it's mostly new and slammed the disc in and out of it a bunch of times to try and get it to not do that. Didn't work. Tried to use the Grease Weasel GUI. Didn't work. It just kept airing out trying to write the disc. So then I went to my 3000 over here, which by the way, if you saw my YouTube short, you do know that I got the big thickness cable now for VGA and she's nice and clean. The video output, all that smearing and masking is gone. It's just a really, really nice output now. Thank you for the suggestion, everybody. See, if you watch this channel, and you leave those comments, I do listen, I do pay attention, and I thank you for it. So then I went over to the 1200 and remembered, well, wait, that can't write floppies, it has a GoTech. And I went over to the 4000. Not only is it a high-density floppy drive, how do I know that? Because I did get it to format once successful a floppy, and I started copying my files to it, and then I looked up and I was like, why does it say there's 1.6 megabytes free? Don't. Yeah, and then I put in regular floppies, and it did died. And it, uh, you know, again, the little switches are probably bad, and I put the floppy in a bunch of times and tried to clean it. Put a floppy in there a bunch of different times back and forth and it's the same freaking thing. Just doesn't, doesn't do it. So had to come all the way over here to the Amiga 2500. These things are workhorses, as you know. You know, they had uh, video toasters in them, TBCs. People would put the uh, serial cards in them and they do call centers with them and they'd just be racks of 2000s everywhere. They had to last, they were beefy, strongest. And yes, the sucker always, uh, seems to work no matter what I throw at it. So let's go ahead, now that we have our floppy entitled extras actually made here, isn't that great? We'll go to my little OS 1.3 folder here. I'm just gonna mount that workbench disc. There it is, 1.3. And we'll go to Mr. Dopus, Mr. Directory Opus. And come over here, we'll say DF0. Come over here and we'll go, I never remember what they're called. I think it's DF. Zero, no, it's not, <laughs> yeah, Q, it's, it's just, okay, I never, I never remember what the, those things are called, what the virtual floppy drives, ADFs are called. You can probably screen with the screen right now and say, Q, this is what it's called. I just go to system info because I'm stupid and this is the only way I know how to do this. And it's DA0, okay. DQ0, no, DA0, yes. There we go, and go copy. Actually, that's the workbench. That's not the extras. I guess I'll rename this floppy workbench instead of extras. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to repeat this for the extras disc, repeat it again for the A570 utility disc, and then I'll have my three precious floppies. My fingers can't, I can't watch this. Like if I try to, here's my fingers, right? Now I'm going to lower my pinky to do three. I, I, I can't, it pulls the other one with it. It's so bizarre. Anybody know what that is? I don't know what that is. Anyway, enough of the finger thing. I'll have my uh, three floppies that I need to at least get the A500 up and running and we can try and play with that 570. Which leads me to, I need a CD to put into it. So we gotta burn a CD. And that's where that old laptop I showed you earlier on and those stack of discs come into play. I'm sure that's gonna go just great with no issues whatsoever. Yeah. 
Okay, so here we are back in the old dusty laptop to burn some ISOs, hopefully, that will work in the old A570. And what these are, the A570 has the unique ability that it is a, basically it's a CD TV. The A570 has all the guts and internals and firmwares and ROMs that it operates as a CD TV once plugged into your Amiga 500. How about that? So I've downloaded some uh, Amiga CD TV files here because why not, right? Let's show that off. I could show you Workbench 1.3, and I will, but we really want to see some CD stuff, right? So I've got, you know, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, and then uh, Advanced Military Systems, Interactive something or other. I have no idea. Anyway, got our old 45 CDR in here, and uh, let's see if we can burn this. All right, so once again, excuse the off-screen recording on this tiny laptop screen, but I haven't used this software in a really, really long time, so... What do I do? Image Making Wizard, Image Finder, CD, DVD, Audio. Oh yeah, I, let's see if it's got the smart stuff, right? Let's just say image. Well, we don't want to make an image, do we? What's that going to say? Please select the source device disk you want to copy dump. Nope, that's not what I want to do. Go to the desktop, the desktop. And let's see here. Let's pick the good old, let's pick the Q file for the advanced military systems and click open. And it says it's 460 megabytes and it's got all this stuff down here. Now, does it know to actually write to my real physical drive? Now, I'm starting to wonder here, folks. The reason this says alcohol 52% instead of alcohol 120%, does that mean this is only a virtual CD mounter and ripper and it doesn't actually do any burning? So it turns out that, yeah, my suspicions were correct. Alcohol, 52%, doesn't actually apparently burn discs, which means I'm going to have to find alcohol 120. Hopefully I uh, still have an, a, a you know, subscription or a, a version of that, right? Okay, so now we're back and we've got alcohol 120%. Yay! And look at that, it's got the uh, military system still in there. So now, hopefully we can go to the image burning wizard, select the image file you would like to burn. Now it's got the last thing that I entered in there, the Q file. All right, delete image after recording, no. Click next, it knows that I've got a burner drive in here. Write speed, now this is really important. You're gonna be working with the CDTV, which is really, really fussy. Now remember, the CDTV slash A570 drive, I've been told, remember, I'm not like a tech guy, but it's not SCSI, it's not IDE, it's some kind of Commodore controller, but no, that's not even correct. I think it's a Panasonic format, um, Matsu Sicha format, so it's not SCSI or ID, it's their own format. I don't know. Funny thing is, the DVD burner drive that's in this thing is actually a Matsushita DVD RAM drive. How about that? Hey! So we're going to take this speed down to the slowest it supports, which is 8x. This could be a problem, because it only does 8x speed. Uh, I've been told you need to write like 1x, 2x for it to work with CDTV and or A570. Write method, I have no idea. I'm gonna use the default of DAO slash SAO. If when I put this into the A570 and the disk doesn't work, it'll either be because I wrote it too fast because I couldn't write it slower for some reason, or maybe it's the wrong mode here. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to Google this, but we're gonna try this first. Let's go ahead and hit start. And there it goes. Now keep in mind, this is a very old laptop. Something is wrong with the recording procedure. Please check the log file. Oh, well that failed real fast. Something is wrong with the recording procedure. Recording failed. Mode select error. Recording DAO 24. These, these are really, by the way, these discs are very, very old. I mean, they're very old, but they don't seem to have any kind of visual bit rot or anything on them, but they are very, very old. But they are CDR, yeah, they're CDRs, 700 meg, 52x capable. I mean, it's possible this crappy burner in this laptop maybe just doesn't work. All right, so now that I've got this external USB drive plugged in, it's actually working. How about that? Look, it's making all the burning disc sounds and it's blinking the lights and we have got success. It's burning at 10x. I know that could be a... Uh, that could be critical. I'm not sure if that's going to work or not, but uh, it's the best I can do. It's, it's the slowest it will go. So we're finally burning using the external. I guess that means my built-in 
uh, burner does not work in this laptop, which was like half the reason I got it. Uh, and there we have it. I've made you suffer through boring Windows stuff long enough. I've got these two discs burned. Uh, that's cool. Um, thank you, LG disc for working, USB thing. Yay. And uh, let's finally get over to the fun stuff. Let's get over to the Amiga 500. And that means I'm going to have to punt the Amiga 600 because I need the RGB to HDMI from the Amiga 600 to put on the 500 so we can actually see the screen. Uh, yeah, and I also need the dust space. I need more space. You know how much I love the 600. I know most of you mock me for liking the 600, but uh, it's just so cute. So here we are with my Amiga 500, the A570, my disc. And yeah, because, uh, you know, Commodore designed this thing thinking it was still 1979, uh, the disc has to go into a caddy. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Great, right? So what I'm going to do here is, uh, I know you guys hate seeing Amigas naked like this, all the stuff exposed. You want to see it all neat and pretty. But the fact of the matter is, with the A570 plugged in, I don't have a way to route my HDMI out for my RGB to HDMI. So I need to have the cover off so I can do that kind of safely. So that's why you're seeing her all naked here. So yeah, there's the RGB to HDMI plugged in there. And now I've got to try and jam this into the fast expansion slot thingy over here and uh, not to destroy it, right? So let's, uh, let's make sure that works. Oh, nervous. That is in there. She's in there good. Sl slid right in, right in there. No problem. 570 just uh, had a fun little time going in. Now, the 570 does have its own power supply. So let's go down here and turn it on. And I see nothing that indicates that it has power. No light, no nothing. I don't know. Let's turn on the 500. Go ahead and stick in my discs that I created earlier. This should be the workbench disc. And fire her up. There we go. Oh, yep. As soon as I turned the 500 on, the 570 came to life. Look at that. Oh, look at that. There you go. Proof. A570 CDTV. Same dang thing because it's plugged in. It's just going to boot from it. Probably not going to even boot from the workbench floppy, is it? So let's go ahead and grab our amazing CD here. I don't know which one of these it is. Slide it in there. It's making all kinds of fun noises. Still no image up on the screen, but it is blinking and doing things. Now you are supposed to route the audio from the 500 into this and then out to your stereo, but I don't even have a, uh, an available stereo to plug the 500 into, so we're not going to have audio, but look at that. We do have a screen. Oh, look at that. Ooh. I'm sure there's probably some amazing multimedia music playing right now, or not, maybe not, because I don't actually don't hear anything. But it's working, and yeah, the RGB HDMI is giving us a beautiful image. Ooh, Advanced Military Systems. So that's the one we booted up. Yeah, you're going to see some RGB to HDMI wackiness over here. Now, you don't have to live with that. You can press the auto config button on the RGB to HDMI and it will adapt to the signal. It'll kind of try and figure it out to make it better. But I'm just happy that we've got this A570 plugged in with an image we burned on the PC and I wasn't sure it was going to work. And it's working, right? Yes, this is so cool. Look at that. Alexandria, Virginia. Mount Vernon, the photo consortium with photo with an F. Hi guys, if you're still around, any of you and gals, if you're there, thank you so much for this. Bunch of, uh, oh look at that, photographs of the F-22 Lightning. Now that's interesting, because this disc is from like 1992. So that is how old that F-22 is. Wow, that's way, way back. You know, recently the F-22 uh, blew up a bunch of balloons over uh, the United States. Actually, right over the top of my house. It was a lot of fun. So, yeah, we could press the help button. Now again... See this green crap here? That has nothing to do with the 570 or the 500. That's just the uh, RGB to HDMI needing to be kind of auto config for this. But I'm trying to keep the camera away from the screen anyway so we don't get the moray, which drives everybody crazy. So let's go ahead and going to introduction. Please wait. All right, well, there you go. You should hear music playing at the comfortable volume through your television or stereo system. If it is too loud or too quiet, please take a moment to adjust the volume level on the TV or stereo. So see, it's already assuming you have a CD TV, and I did not plug my joystick in. I was actually trying to use the mouse. So I'm wondering if it's entering some kind of like automatic attract mode where it just 
automatically starts running demo content for you. Maybe. I mean, it's doing that. I'll smash the enter key. All right, so I smash the enter key. Here it goes. It's playing. I really wish I had, oh, wow. Look at that. Look at all the little, look at all the popular helicopters there. Can I use the arrow key? No. All right, I'm gonna try plugging in the Amiga joystick while it's on and see what happens. <laughs> you serious? All right, so now I've got my Epix, uh, you know, 500XJ plugged in. And let's see if that lets me move around and do stuff. Now I plugged this in after it booted. If I click the, okay, I click the fire button and now it says going to main menu. This might be a situation where because, oh, there it goes, you know it's working. Wow, sea power, air power, strategic, land power. Let's do land power, land power is always fun. Click the button and yeah, she uh, spools up and does her thing. This is so, so 90s. Yeah, we like, we like tanks, right? Let's do tanks. They've been kind of relevant in today's current world in 2023. Oh, look at that. US M1A1 Abrams MBT. Yeah, let's click that one. That's the bad boy. Of course, it's kind of out of date. We're up to like the A2 now or maybe even higher. You know, this is actually pretty speedy though. Ooh, look at those photos. So what do I do? Do I click the button? Going to extra options menu. Okay, this is very exciting. Oh, okay, it kind of tells you about some stuff. Narration text, so you see the narration text down there, which is cool. I can't do that because I don't have audio. Going back to the previous menu. Now remember, this is all running off the CD live. There's no, there's no installation. So let's pick a different tank, for example, and this time, yeah, we're gonna go to the M60A3, MBT's main battle tank. So let's, uh, instead of clicking the button, no, let's, let's just click the joystick to the right. Does that give us a different image? No. Yeah, okay, so I guess <laughs> I guess you get one image of each of these vehicles. That That's it. You don't get like a collage of images, you get one image of the vehicle. Well, you know, I mean, that's appreciated, I guess. So if we go down here, let's look at some, uh, yeah, let's look at some German Leopard 1s and 2s. That's a nice tank. You know, a lot of people don't know that the German uh, Leopard shares the same main gun as the uh, Abrams, actually. It was I don't even know if that's still true though. I gotta be careful when I say stuff like that. So yeah, it doesn't look like there's any more than just the one image. You get the one image. I, but you have to keep in mind though, back in 1992, you can see how responsive this is. You know, normally you stick a floppy disk in and you're just clicking around and you're waiting forever for the floppy disk to load whatever the heck it's gonna show. Like how many times you played a game and you hear the floppy disk just ripping and shredding to show a single intro title, right? We're pretty much kind of clicking around here and through just a brief little period of waiting, we're getting to see these full screen, you know, color images. And these appear to be ham, actually. Yeah, these look like ham. So that's pretty neat. So that's actually sticking a disc in and just firing up and, and booting as a CDTV. Now, what about having this attached to your Amiga 500 and not booting into CV, CDTV? I just want to boot my workbench flappy and and then use this as a drive can we do that can we see files on it let's try that next all right so what was about an hour and a half my time and no time your time i went ahead and made a workbench 1.3 disc using go adf from an original amiga 500 1.3 boot floppy so no before i was like formatting a disc and then copying the workbench 1.3 files to it well, as we can see, that just wasn't working. So I've used GoADF, GoADF to just image the dang disc. Also, I've hooked up some speakers. Look at that. Don't ever tell me I don't give you five stars for service. We got sound now. And this is all still running and working despite all of the chaos I've created. So let's uh, see what happens when I put this disc in. So one of the things we're going to have to fix right away is this horrible clown color orange and blue. And yes, some of you may not know, you can change these colors from the defaults that they actually are. One of the things I like to do is neutralize it. Make it look like 2.0, as you might call it. But honestly, I just like neutral tones. Down here, there we go. Let's change the orange to, you know, it needs to be like a bright color. 
What I like to do is make it a little more into the blue. Apologize, my mouse is really bad, folks, as you may have seen in prior videos. All right, well, that looks good to me. Let's go ahead and click save. Ah, I can feel like I can breathe again. Look at this, yay. So one of the things you see here right away, well, we got workbench loaded. Now what? Well, the 570 is supposed to work without any utilities disc, but let's go ahead, eject this disc. Now I don't have my second floppy drive hooked up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put in the A570's utility disc and let's see if it even reads. Sure enough, there it is, open it up. And this has some basic functions, CD play, CD control. Let's go ahead and double click that and see what kind of amazing thing we get. Hey, does that look familiar? So again, you get all of this built into the ROM on the A570 and then it's gonna go ahead and reboot and crash on you. <laughs> or no, I guess maybe, yeah, it did. It rebooted and crashed. So I don't know why it did that. So what it was basically doing was it was loading this program that exists in its ROM. So that this A570 utility disk basically gives you the, the two programs that you get normally when you just boot from the A570. So yeah, not sure why that crashed. This is a 1.3 kickstart uh, 500 and a 1.3 workbench. And yeah, those beeps you're hearing, by the way, that's the uh, A570. It's now has sound. So we're, we're, we're gonna beep away there. Gonna go ahead and put the workbench 1.3 disc back in there and do a three finger salute. I wanna boot into workbench here and then I wanna insert the CD into the A570 and see what happens, right? That's what we wanna see. So the unfortunately, yeah, the A570 utility disc, which contains the programs that are built into the ROM on the A570, which is basically the, the CD TV software, the CD player and the, the screen, uh, it just it killed the 500, it just rebooted, so. You saw it here, it happens. Remember, what do I always say? I do this so you don't have to. But we're not gonna give up. We already know the A570 works because we went through and saw those amazing hand images of tanks and whatnot. But I wanna see what happens when we stick a disc in the CD drive while we're in Workbench. All right, so we got our Workbench up. I'm gonna go ahead and slam in this disc. And let's see if it shows up. All right, look at that, Indiana Jones. Go ahead and double clicker. Oh, look at this, Rooms Indie. Now, as you can see, that's in the amazing Deutsch language, uh, German. We always love those folks over there. Let's go ahead and run Indie. Let's see if we can actually run it off the disk, the actual disk disk here. Hmm, there we go. Got some Indie. So I'm double clicking the Indie disk. Instead of booting off the disk, which you should be able to do, obviously. I'm trying to run it from Workbench. And is it gonna work? Let's find out. You can of course stick the disc in the A570 and it should just boot into the game automatically as a CDTV game without needing to be installed. So right now the A570 should be working its magic to read and stream the game while we're in Workbench, I think. Oh, there we go. And sure enough, there it is. So yeah, you can either boot with the a, a you can you can either boot with the disc in the drive, CD TV style, or you can uh, load Workbench and put the disc in and just start playing it. So here we go, playing along. This looks good. You can hear the CD-ROM drive doing all of its CD-ROM drive things. Now it is in German, so all my friends overseas who are in Germany, uh, you know, or arguably Austria, yeah, you can probably read this, right? I can't read this. Now this is conventionally a point and click game, but remember, it's a CD TV game. And a CD TV didn't actually come with a mouse. Uh, so I'm wondering if I can use my mouse or if I'm gonna have to try and use the joystick. Let's see here. So I see a cursor and yeah, I can use my mouse, my really bad mouse. So I'm, I'm gonna click on Notebook. Ah, this looks like copy protection, doesn't it? Oh boy. Yeah, so this is, looks like this is actually a, a legitimately uh, imaged game and it has copy protection and I don't have the manual with me. So unfortunately I'm unable to progress, but look, you did get to see 
that it the the a 570 does work i actually burned images on my little laptop even though it was at 10x speed it still worked and the game loaded just fine here and uh, it works and yes the sound works you can hear the sound coming out of the 500 into the 570 yay and you saw that we could actually boot from the 570 and it works so that is the uh, a570 it was a it was this amazing well let's let's reflect here for a second what really was the a570 yeah the a570 was a product that came too late uh <laughs> it was designed for the Amiga 500, as you see here, but it was released after they had discontinued the 500. And they had released the 1200 and, of course, the 600, which you have seen before in this channel, which don't, they don't work with this. So it was like, well, you've released a product too late to the market. Everyone else, like especially Windows PCs and even Mac, had started getting into CDs. And Commodore was late. They were really late with this product. But... After the CDTV failure, where no one seemed to want a set-top box Amiga, even though it had MIDI on it, which would have been great for musicians, I still think if you're jamming out uh, and you're a musician, the CDTV was amazing because it had the MIDI in and out, and it actually fit in your rack mount. I think it would have been an amazing MIDI machine, but no one bought it. So they come out with this to kind of give the Amiga that, you know, the buzzword of CD, and really all it is is repackaging the CDTV to work with the 500. And then they discontinue the host computer. They don't make it, they don't sell it anymore. Of course you could still buy it, there was plenty of stock remaining, but it was really just kind of a big uh, Commodore. They, they did this so often, especially later on, they just they had a lot of fails. And that's what I mean by this, like yet another failure from Commodore. And it's a shame because, you know, yeah, there's a huge collection of Fred Fish discs and public domain discs and lots of amazing CDTV, you know, information discs and things back then remember this is the late this is the early actually early to mid 90s so it was a great way to get information if you could afford to buy this it did give your amiga the ability to do what you may have seen your friends doing on their on their pcs which is stick a disc in maybe play a game or you know have the encyclopedia have a multimedia uh, thing that lets you explore things you might care about you know, photography animals plants how to cook that kind of thing so it is a neat product, but unfortunately it just missed that window. And here it is all these years later, sitting on some poor YouTube user's desk, uh, who's trying to show you all about it and tell you about it to keep it, keep, to keep the dream alive, I guess. Right. But Hey, it worked. Yeah. You can burn discs at 10 X and it still reads them. And uh, as long as you have an Amiga 500 with 1.3 kickstart to keep in mind if you the smart the smart folks among you the the uh, acutely aware amigans of you saw that my amiga has a red power light not a green power light yes this is a red power light amiga 500 so it's ntsc but more importantly it's a kickstart 1.2 amiga 500 so i had to actually put in a kickstart 1.3 to get this to work kickstart 1.2 does not let you put in cd drives and I don't even think it lets you put in hard drives. You have to have a 1.3 Kickstart to even use hard drives or this. So keep that in mind too. If you do come across one of these, you do need a Kickstart 1.3 minimum. So there you go. Uh, I hope you appreciated all my efforts. This is a disaster. I have to clean my office up now. It's a complete mess. And uh, thanks for watching. Yeah, I'm done with this video.